Hi, I'm Tom from Midwest Native Skills, and I thought we'd go over a few common plants that you often see in the woods and maybe not familiar with what the medicinal or edible uses the plant can uh, do for you. Here we're at a white pine tree. Now you probably know with the sap of this you can make what's called pine pitch sticks. And that's a two-part epoxy. You would take a stick, you would roll it into the pine pitch and roll it into the white wood ash back and forth. And when you need it, just hold it to a flame, the pine pitch mixes with the white wood ash and you use it as a two-part epoxy to fasten things together. Once we use it on a uh, main canoe trip where well, somebody ripped the bottom of the canoe out and we had to put a patch on and we used pine pitch combined with the wood ash to do that. But medicinally over here we're going to go after the pine needles. Now it's easy to remember this the word white has five letters in it and if you pull a bundle of these needles off each bundle has five needles to it. Now what these needles are high in is vitamin C. So what you want to do is take about 15 to 20 of these bundles and bend them in half just to bruise them. Put them in the bottom of a cup, pour hot water on top, leave it steep for about 10 to 15 minutes. Just like you're making tea, which you are. Strain the needles out and drink the tea. That's If you drink three cups a day it'll give you your daily dose of vitamin C. So uh, pine needles are a great uh, asset in the wintertime if you're looking for vitamin C and want to prevent the cold. Going back to the base of this tree, two things I noticed here. One is this plant called ground ivy. Uh, it goes by other names too. Some people call it creeping charlie. Some people call it gill over the ground. What you do pick it and make sure that you have the right plant you can spin it in your fingers and find it has a square stem that means it's a member of the mint family you take the leaves of this tear them up into small pieces again put them in a coffee cup pour hot water over them leave them steep for about 10 minutes and drink three cups a day now what this will do for you is it'll take heavy metals out of your uh, body so if you've been eating tuna or salmon and you see something on the news that they had a high mercury content or lead content. Those heavy metals are hard to get out of your system. This gill over the ground will assist that and within two or three months you'll be clean of those uh, heavy metals. Another plant right next to it, these small leaves, uh, the, the little white flowers are gone from this, but this is chickweed main use for chickweed, you can use it in salads, it makes a great addition to your salads, but again if you make a tea of it, it helps in weight loss. Now this little plant does have, not have any caffeine, it's not going to stimulate your, uh, your uh, metabolism, and it's not really an appetite suppressant. But the last time I drank three cups a day for a month, without changing anything in my diet, I lost about eight pounds. So you might want to try chickweed as a tea. Let's go around the uh, field here and see what else we can find. Here's a plant that everyone should know. It's called jewelweed. Uh, the flowers come out midsummer. They're going to be this yellow color or they'll be an orange color. If you find a plant with orange, you'll find the bugs all like them a lot and they'll be bug eaten, but they're still useful for their medicinal purpose. The jewelweed usually grows within 50 feet of poison ivy, and it happens to be the cure for poison ivy. To utilize it as that, you break off the stem of the plant and take off all of the uh, leaves. All we want is the juice that's in the stem. So we would break the stem up in our hands, rub it between our fingers. It has a juice in there similar to aloe. But then you would rub your arms wherever you touch the poison ivy and it will completely protect you from the poison ivy rash. Now once you get the rash, you're in a different mode, you're in a curing mode. So we'll show you what to use for that. This is the preventative for poison ivy and it's called jewelweed. It has another name called touch me not because come fall, these flowers will turn into little seed pods that when you touch them, they'll shoot the seeds three or four feet at you. So touch me nots or jewelweed, the cure for poison ivy. Back here is a plant that really this time of year isn't useful 
but in the uh, fall it will be. It's a wild rose. Wild rose, come about October, November, are going to have red berries on them. These are called rose hips. You might have purchased some vitamin C. It all have a special uh, labeling on it saying with rose hips. That's from the uh, uh, rose plant. What you want to do with these, uh, when you see the, the red berries on the plant, they'll be hard until the first frost. After the first frost, about 10% of them will turn soft and sweet. So you want to go around the plant and feel the berries. When you get a soft one, pick it off, eat it. If you eat 10 of these a day, you get your daily dose of vitamin C. The next frost, the 10 per, another 10% that's left will turn soft. So this way nature kind of gives you your normal supply of vitamin C throughout the winter time. Here's one of the most important uh, edible and medicinal plants you can find. It's called broadleaf plantain. You can tell by its broad leaves. It comes out in June and it'll last until about September. When it's young, it's an edible. You, can, you want to get the tender leaves, so take your fingers and feel the leaves. If they feel like uh, a paper towel, they're not going to be the best to eat. They'll taste like stringy celery. But if you go to the inside of the plant, this one feels like tissue paper. That would be good for your salad. Second thing you do, you pick a leaf if you've gotten bit by a mosquito, insect bite, if you've got a cut that you don't want infected, you pick a leaf, make sure that the cows were not around it, but you pick a leaf and you put it in your mouth and chew it up. We're going to be making what's called a poultice. Chew it up good in your mouth, 10, 20 seconds. Then you take the gooey mess out of your mouth and put it on that mosquito bite. Within about 20 seconds, it takes the itch away. If it was a honeybee or a wasp sting, it'll take the sting away. And if it was a cut, it'll prevent infection. After about a minute, you can take it off and just make sure you don't get dirt in there, or you could put a Band-Aid over it and just leave it on there. The last thing I want to tell you about this plant is the seed stalks, these right here. Pick a seed stalk, and you need to eat three a day and you put them in your mouth and zip off the seeds and eat the seeds from three of these. If you eat three seed stalks per day for three days in a row, your body will naturally excrete a mosquito repellent. That effect will last for two days after you stop eating the plant. So if you plan to go camping next weekend, on Wednesday, eat three of these seed stalks, the seeds off of them. Thursday, three stalks, Friday, three stalks, and that effect will last Saturday and Sunday until you're away from your camping trip. Now, don't eat 20 of them, because these seeds are the main ingredient in Metamucil, so you'll be running to the bathroom quite a bit. So those are a few plants that are around, that are common, that you should know. And remember, you're never too old, you're never too young to rediscover the old ways.